Hello and welcome to the Cow Eye Dissection at the Science Museum of Virginia. My name is Noah. Today what we're going to show you is a dissection of a cow's eyeball. So here we have a cow eye. Uh, it has been preserved and we're going to talk a little bit about the anatomy of the eye, how cow and human eyes differ, what allows us to see in the first place. We'll explore the outside parts of the eye, open it up and explore the inside parts and talk a little bit about vision. So one of the first things that we'll see on the front of the cow's eye is this part right here. This is the cornea. The cornea acts kind of like the window into the eye. All of the light that goes farther back has to pass through this first. In fact, you can feel your own cornea if you close your eye, put your finger near the top and roll your eye up and down, you might feel a bit of a bump. That's because the cornea has a shape called a convex lens where it has a bit of a half circle that pushes out from the rest of the eye. And that helps you to focus on light. Now around the side of the eye, this part here is the sclera, which is uh, pretty much like the white of your eye, but some animals do have more pigment in their sclera than we do. This is really tough leathery tissue and is what we'll have to cut through in a minute to actually reach the inside parts of the eye. When we get to the back, these are the muscles that attach to your eye. Just like muscles in the rest of your body, it allows you to move your eye. One of the first differences we see between cow and human eyes is that cows have fewer muscles attached uh, to the outside of their eye. Cows have four sets of muscles that allow them to move their eyes up and down and side to side. We have six, so you can move your eyes diagonally and you can roll your eyes and cows cannot. Then here off the back of the eye is the optic nerve. The optic nerve is kind of like uh, the cable that stretches from the back of your eye to your brain. It connects together and carries all the information that your eye processes back to your brain. And we like to say actually that your eye doesn't do any seeing, your brain does. Uh, your eye just collects that information and this is what sends it back to the brain. So now let's start to look at the inside of the eye. This eye here has been preserved already, so it's not quite like a healthy living eye. Uh, one of the things we can see is in this cornea, it's a little bit flat. Normally there's a pocket of fluid behind it called aqueous humor. Aqueous humor is what fills it in and gives it fluid pressure to have that healthier round shape there. What I'm going to do to start the dissecting part is poke through the front of the cornea and see if we can find any aqueous humor. We'll go ahead and poke through there. There we go. And that fluid that comes out is the aqueous humor. Aqueous comes from the word aqua, means watery. Humor is an old fashioned term for bodily fluid. So this is the watery fluid in your eye. And it performs a couple jobs. Uh, it keeps the fluid pressure in your cornea. Without that, the whole thing can sag and push in really easily and you wouldn't be able to focus very well with that. It provides nutrition to parts of your eye. Uh, most of your body gets nutrition from blood flow, but you can't have a bunch of blood flowing around in your eye, so you have this aqueous humor instead. And you replenish it constantly. Every 48 hours you'll have a new humor as opposed to what you have right now. Now let's go ahead and cut into the eye. So what I have today are a pair of scissors. I'm going to try to make a little incision in the side of the sclera here a lot of the time. I might use a scalpel for this, but scissors work just fine too. And so I'm going to cut this in half and we'll have a front and a back half of the eye so we can see the parts on the inside that we normally can't. And when we remove this front part, one of the first things that we will see is aqueous humor's cousin vitreous humor. So vitreous humor is this gelatinous stuff that we have right here. It has almost the same consistency as jello or gelatin. Uh, it's called vitreous because vidrio is the Spanish word for glass. So this is the glassy fluid in your eye. In the center of the vitreous humor, you have your lens. So your lens is what does all of your fine-tuned focusing. About 80% of the focusing that you do is done by your cornea and your lens does the other 20% and it changes based on whether you're looking at things close up or far away. So if you're looking at something close, you have muscles surrounding your lens called ciliary muscles. Uh, they will tense up and squeeze the lens 
so that you can see things a little bit closer and it relaxes when you look at things a little bit farther away. So if you get eye strain a lot of the time from uh, looking at a computer screen up close or reading for a long period of time, it's because those ciliary muscles are doing a really tough job of squeezing on your lens constantly and holding it in that different shape. Now one of the very common problems that people can get with our eyes as we get older are cataracts. The cataract is when the lens gets a portion of it that's clouded and obscures vision. Uh, this lens right here, already before I even starts, has a little bit of a cut or a nick right there, and that wouldn't really be in a healthy lens. But what we're gonna do now is go ahead and peel this away as best as I can here. The lens grows like an onion, and we can remove some layers here. As long as you are alive, your lens is adding layers. So as we get older, sometimes it can become a little bit tougher and more difficult to bend. And cataract surgery is when doctors will remove the damaged part inside of the lens and then fill it in with an artificial lens. And in the last couple of years, there have been a few whole lens replacement surgeries where they take the old lens out and put an entirely new one in. All right, now in the back of the eye, this is where most of the actual action is going on in terms of vision. This layer in the back right here is the retina. And it got a little bit crumpled up when we removed the vitreous humor, but we can spread it out a little more. There we go. So the retina in a healthy living eye looks a little bit pink. This one looks sort of a duller orangish color. Well, that's because normally the retina carries blood vessels that give it that sort of pinkish or red color. If you get red eye in a camera flash, that's because the light illuminates the retina in the back. But the job that the retina has is one of the most important in the eye. It contains two different types of cells called rods and cones. Rod and cone cells are what we call your photoreceptors. So you can imagine for a second that if I was getting brain surgery, a surgeon could shine a flashlight on the vision center of my brain, but I wouldn't be seeing anything. Uh, if you just shine light directly on the brain, it doesn't have any clue what to do with it. Your rod and cone cells take light energy and turn it into electrochemical signals, the language of the brain. So you've got about 7 million cone cells. They are located mostly in the center of your eye in a point called the macula uh, right there. You've got three different types of cones that allow you to see all of the color that you've ever seen. Uh, they allow you to see sharp detail, but they don't work very well if it's dark outside. So what you have to make up for that Around the edge of your eye, your peripheral vision, you have about 120 to 130 million rod cells. Uh, your rod cells work pretty well, even if it's relatively dark outside, but they don't see any color, they don't see sharp detail. What they're really good at is picking up movement. So if you see something move out of the corner of your eye, that's probably due to your rods, and then you can shift where you're looking to see it better with your uh, cones and your macula. Now this is a cow eye, so one time a lot of the things you hear about animal vision is that they are colorblind. They're kind of colorblind compared to us, but a lot of animals like cows and cats and dogs and rats have what's called dichromatic vision, which means that they have two types of cones instead of three, and they can probably see uh, some colors, but not all of the range that we can. So with cows in particular, they should be able to see uh, blue and yellow, but it seems like it's difficult to train them to respond to different color. Now, some animals you can teach to select a specific color button or lever. Now, if we go ahead and scrape all of this retinal tissue up, we can find the point that it attaches back here. So there's just one little point in the back of the eye where it's not removing quite as easily. That's called your blind spot or your optic disc. That's where the optic nerve pokes into the back of the eye to collect all the information that your rod and cone cells are making and deliver it back to the brain. But because you have optic nerve poking through right here, there's no room for rod or cone cells. So any light that shines on this point in the eye is completely lost. Uh, so that's why you have your blind spot. Now in the back of the cow eye, we can see this really bright shiny layer called tapetum. So tapetum is something that's present in a lot of animals, but not in us. If you ever shine a flashlight or take a picture of an animal's eyes, and they have those bright shining eyes that glow back at you, that's because the tapetum is a reflector. Light that hits it, 
bounces back out through the eye and it gives them good night vision. Uh, but it always comes with a little bit of a cost. In the back of our eye, we have this dark layer called choroid. Choroid absorbs extra light and gives you better daytime vision. Cows, obviously, have a little bit of both, and we are highly specialized towards good daytime vision, relatively poor nighttime vision, and we have all choroid in the back of our eye. Then back up in the front, we have uh, one part left to see. Right behind the cornea, attached to it, is your iris that gives your eye its color. So the iris can be peeled away by slipping this little dull probe under there and then scraping this around in a circle. And in cow eyes, the only color eye you ever see, these really deep dark brown ones. Uh, but the point of the eye is not to give your eye a pretty color, it's to control how much light is reaching the retina in the back. So the hole in the iris here is your pupil. The pupil is not a physical part of the eye you can take out, it's just the absence of iris. So it allows light to shine through. And you can imagine uh, that if it's really bright outside, you have plenty of light to go around, your pupil gets smaller. It constricts that opening to protect the really sensitive rod cells in the back of your eye. But if there's not enough light for your cones to do the job, then your pupil will dilate and that hole will open up to let more light in so it can shine on more of your retina in the back of your eye. One of the differences we can see between cow and human eyes is that cows have these little sideways oval pupils. Uh, humans have circular pupils. Cats have cat eye pupils. Different pupil shapes are slightly adapted for different functions, uh, like the cat eye pupils, very good for nocturnal animals. The sideways oval pupil is very good for animals that are looking out for predators sneaking up behind them. Uh, you see it on goats and frogs and a couple other animals too. But it all does the same basic function of controlling how much light gets to the back of your eye in the first place. And then with that, we are back around front at the cornea. We've been through some of the basic parts of the cow eye, talked about some of the differences between cow and human eyes, and the path that light takes to allow you to see. So hope you enjoyed getting to see our cow eye dissection here at the Science Museum of Virginia. Uh, my name is Noah Hayden. I hope you have a great rest of your day.